What's up everyone? We're back! My name is the Riffer Danny B and welcome to 2016 baby and we're back with a brand new series. This is the CWR, the Championship Wrestling Revolution, my WWE Custom Universe Mode. And we're kicking off tonight with the first of our three brands and that is Asylum. And introducing first, the very first man to ever walk out on CWR Asylum here on YouTube is your man, Dolph Ziggler. We're kicking off tonight the first round in the CWR World Heavyweight Championship Tournament, which will culminate in four weeks at CWR. Money in the bank. Yes, I am stealing their pay-per-view still. Dolph Ziggler here to make an impression in the first match to try and gain his spot in the CWR World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. So as we await our next superstar, let me explain. We have three brands. On Mondays, we will have Asylum. On Fridays, we will have Revolt. And then on Wednesdays, which I know is a weird order of doing it, but bear with me, we will have Horizon, which is a women's only brand. And I'm not using the term Divas for a reason. And as we introduce the man that gravity forgot, Neville, to explain that CWR is going to be a little different from my old WWE Universe mode. There is no NXT, there is no developmental brand. All the guys I like from NXT have come up. There has been 15 selections for each brand of WWE superstars. Now they do include factions and groups as a single pick, so there is a lot more than 15 stars on each brand. And there is also a number of create stars. Not my own, there are a couple of my own, but majoritively they have been lent to me by stars of the EFA community. And that is going to get a lot bigger. And if you've ever wanted to be in a video game, well, pay attention because your chance could arrive sooner than you think. So let's get this thing kicking. This is a Fool's Count Anywhere match. The first match in the CWR World Heavyweight Championship and Tournament. Now, there will be eight superstars that compete from Asylum and eight from Revolt. The World Championship is going to be a dual brand title. And yes, the brands are completely separate. They will interact with each other, of course. There are going to be two Interbrand Championships, the first of which, of course, as I mentioned, is the CWR World title. The women will not be on these brands. They will have their own brand. They'll have their own championships, but they will still appear on the pay-per-views. So anyway, as we get down to business, Dolph Ziggler has taken an early advantage of Neville. We will see the first four matches here on Asylum tonight. Two in this part, in part one. And then another two in part two. And as for the parts of the seasons, we're going to endeavour to not make the videos more than about 20 minutes long each time. Uh, it's just simply for editing reasons as well as your enjoyment. You don't want to be sitting there watching a single video for 40 minutes. You know, you'd have to take a break somewhere nearby, in the middle, you know, and have to come back to it later on. So we're going to do it that way. So maybe, depending on how long the matches are, there may be two parts, three, or maybe even four, depending on how long the matches take. Uh, as I say, it will endeavour to never be 20 minutes or more, roughly, give or take, you know, as long as these matches take. So we kick it off big here with Neville and Dolph Ziggler. And despite Dolph having the early advantage, Neville takes it to the outside and gains the advantage over Dolph. We've got a cover here. Easy kick out by the show off. As I say, we've gone custom in 2016. Yes, doing a WWE brand was fun, but we're going to go custom, we're going to go my way, we're going to do things a little differently. And I will even, at some point, probably over the weekend coming, produce a video that lets you know the kind of in-character lore behind how CWR came about. But for now, we concentrate on this match as Neville goes for a submission. Easily waved off there. The referee getting Neville off Dolph. Ziggler is the man to turn things around. As I say, this championship tournament will take place over the coming weeks on CWR television, both on Mondays and Friday nights. The finals, the final match, one man from each brand will compete in the main event of CWR Money in the Bank at the end of the month. Or possibly even the beginning of February, because it's now <laughs> the second week in January. So forgive me for that. 
Also want to take this time as this match continues as Dolph Ziggler manages to take advantage with a super kick on Neville there. We'll take a minute for a break here. That's got to be a rope break. Maybe not. Neville is under the ropes, but the three count still count. Of course, it's false count anywhere, isn't it? I forgot for a second there. Never mind. I'll get to my point in a minute. Dolph Ziggler has just taken advantage and has just pinned Neville to advance to the quarterfinals of the CWR World Championship Tournament. As we take a look back at some of the moments in this match, there was a standing suplex there by Neville that made it look like the gra man that gravity forgot was going to go forward, but he just wasn't able to keep the momentum up. Dolph Ziggler turned it around following a Boston Crab. Got Neville back into the ring. Developed. Developed? <laughs> yeah, that was daft. Hit Neville with that super kick. And Dolph Ziggler gets the three count to advance to the next round. Well under the show off there. Amazing performance. Now, as this, before the next match gets on, as Dolph Ziggler celebrates, I want to take this chance to say thank you for everyone that's continued to support me over the Christmas break. Obviously, I've been away for about three weeks. There was a reason for that. Um, life just gets a bit manic for me over Christmas. Plus, we had our last episode of the former season completely screw up recording-wise, so I decided to just move on and do what I've always wanted to do and create my own brand. Uh, some of you may know the CWR name, and I will explain how that changes from the old EFED that used to run under the CWR name. I'll explain how that has translated into the YouTube version eventually as we welcome our next competitor from Dublin, Ireland. Weighing in at 270 pounds, Seamus, the Celtic warrior looking to make his impact here in CWR. Although a lot of people say a lot of bad things about Seamus, but quite frankly, I'm a fan. Always been a fan of the Celtic warrior. Maybe it's because I'm English, but when you put him up against this guy, I guess we got a new favorite going into this one. From Cincinnati, Ohio, it's Dean Ambrose. The voice tonight, of course, coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts. Dean Ambrose, can he take his chance to become the CWR World Heavyweight Champion? There's a lot of stiff competition in this tournament. But if anyone can pull something out of the bag when we're least expecting it, it's the lunatic French himself, Dean Ambrose. So yeah, as I was saying, we've been away for three weeks. And I thank you for all your continued support. Some people have specifically reached out to me to ask when we're coming back. Thank you guys. That shows a level of support that I would never thought I'd even get, even with such a... Well, to me, it's a decent subscriber count, but it can only get better, really, can't it? And I appreciate all the support. We are back, and hopefully 2016 is going to be the year of the Ripperverse and the year of the revolution. Now, we start off with Seamus. Getting a good clothesline in there on Dean Ambrose, but it's going to take a lot more than that to keep the fringe down. The hard hit in Sheamus, of course, this does ignite what is kind of an ongoing rivalry between Dean Ambrose and Sheamus. They had for a few good wars in the 2K16 Universe mode. That stuff hasn't been forgotten. We've just moved on. We've wiped the slate clean. And what happened before does count, and it did help to get people booked onto these shows, get them roster picks. I was going to do a draft, draft show, but I figured why waste time, just get right back into the action. And here we go with Dean Ambrose and Sheamus. Now this match is a standard one full match, so there is no count, there is count outs, there is disqualifications. So if Dean wants to win this one, he is going to have to get the Celtic Warrior back into the ring very, very quickly. I'll say quickly, you never know. <laughs> We've got some time. Dean Ambrose though with a good elbow to the jaw there of Sheamus. Ambrose getting a little cocky there. He's paying for it though, though. There though, should I say, as Sheamus comes right back into this thing. And he's the one to throw Dean to the outside this time. The Celtic Warrior going to try and look to do some damage on the outside, away from the safety of the canvas. Looks it so, the belly to belly suplex there by the Mohawk. Shamus 
Seamus really laying in the Dean Ambrose now. The referee seems to have stalled his count as we get to a four there. Slow down a little bit. <laughs> Seamus taunting the crowd as they respond with, you look stupid, Seamus. Ignoring it as always, the Celtic warrior makes his way back into the ring and getting into the corner. You can only suspect what he might be setting up for already. Is he going to go for it? No, he's not. There's the rolling, cent uh, rolling fireman carries slam there. I'm losing my words already. Ripper's back, baby. White noise. We are going for white noise. This one is going to be over quickly at this rate. Dean Ambrose needs to get back into this one fast. Seamus pulling him into the middle of the ring, looking for an early cover. We've got one, two, and Dean Ambrose able to kick out, but the momentum is on the side of the Celtic Warrior. And we have endeavoured to make these matches shorter where applicable so we can get more matches in on any given show. We are going to try for four every single night, which is why we split it into the 20-minute-ish segments. Because nobody wants to sit around for too long watching a wrestling show. As Monday Night Raw proves every single week, baby. Seamus looked to go for the double axe handle there, but Dean Ambrose had a counter and he locks in a sleep hole, trying to get some stamina back, trying to turn the momentum back to his side, slowing down the hard-hitting Celtic warrior. Dean has it slowed right down now. This is unusual for Ambrose. He usually is the one to pick up the pace. He's going to... Regret it though as Seamus is able to counter. He's got to be careful of that inevitable bro kick that is going to come his way. And there it is! He connects with the bro kick. We've got one, two, three. Seamus has done it already. And the Celtic Warrior advances. So we already know our first match for next week's tournament quarterfinals. Seamus will take on the show off. Dean looked to get an early start here against Seamus, but it didn't last. Dean Ambrose just couldn't keep it up. Seamus turned the momentum around. And before you knew it, bro kick to the face, baby. This was as Dean Ambrose came out of that sleeper hold, came out of that rest hold. And Seamus just had the match from there on in. He throws Dean Ambrose against the ropes, pops him up, bro kick for the win. The ref wasn't even paying attention to the finish, but there you go. There's the cover. And we've got three. Celtic Warrior advances again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the first part of episode one of CWR, and this has been Asylum. I hope you can join me later on tonight as we bring you part two and the final two championship match openers. Thank you all, and I will see you next time.